welcome to another episode of Roxy's Ride and Inspire. Today it's all about slow drop-offs. So how you can drop off an obstacle at slow speeds. I would like to teach you two versions today. The first is the wheelie drop and the second one is the back wheel hop drop. And the back wheel hop drop is the more advanced one. And here's how they work. To get started with some security relevant issues. One, use flat pedals to practice. Use shin guards. Use very good flat pedal shoes. So something that actually sticks to the pins. Check that you have good pins and lower the saddle. And do warm up before you do this because you want to be all nice and warm and ready to get going. In both versions, I'm coming to a full stop, so I'm track standing right at the edge of the drop off. So make sure you have track stand styled. I have a how to instruction about this already. I'll link it below in the description. Once you've come to a full halt, you want to perform this wheelie impulse. As you can see, in comparison to the normal wheelie, I'm not sitting down, but I'm standing up. So here are the individual exercises that lead to this drop. For the wheelie drop, you want to start practicing standing up wheelies in a flat and controlled environment. This is how these look. As you can see, it's not about riding wheelies across the entire mall or anything, and it's not about sitting down wheelies. It's about standing up. So what you want to do is have your pedal in almost this position, maybe a little higher. This is called a power position. From here, you have the maximum power to generate either speed or to generate energy for your front wheel to lift the moment you're pedaling front. You always want to cover your rear brake. For me, it's on the right. Check on which side it is and if it's functioning properly. Because if you do a too hard pedal stroke, then you might loop out to the back. Which is why you always want to cover the brake. In case you do, you can always pull it and your front wheel will fall back straight ahead. So the movement is I'm standing, I'm rolling, I'm ratcheting to the power position, I'm giving a dynamic pedal punch and I'm letting the bike come close to me. As you can see, I'm pretty balanced in the bike, so very forward with my body position and this way I'm not falling off the back, which is important if you're going to perform a wee drop. If you're scared of looping out, then this is an exercise you can really practice because it's going to take you that fear. It's going to give you like a sheet anchor. You can hold on to it because you know you'll always be safe. You see, as I touch my rear brake, the front wheel just falls down automatically. So if you really have that finger brake mind connection stabilized, so you practice it a few times, then usually you just pull that rear brake all the as soon as you come close to looping out. And this next exercise is, if you manage to get it closer, is also something you should practice, which is jumping off to the back on purpose. So now that you've practiced those standing up wheelies, it's enough if you do two, maximum three pedal rotations, you don't need to do more, then and also obviously the break and the looping out. As soon as you've practiced that, the next step is to set yourself a timing mark. So a cone or anything, a sock, anything is fine and you want to perform it there. So what you want to do now is you want to approach to your timing mark, stand there in a track stand and then do the wheelie drop down your imaginary drop. So as you may have noticed, I actually performed one and a half pedal rotation because that's usually how much you actually need. So you have to get used to landing with your wrong foot forward. Everyone has a preferred stance. For me, it's right foot forward. So you're performing one and a half pedal rotations and then you're landing with your other foot forward. And this is also what you can start practicing now here in the flat with your timing mark that you approach down in the track stand, then perform your wheelie lift standing up and 
let it down after your rear wheel has crossed the imaginary edge of your drop. So then you get used to having that halt staying and being able to absorb the landing afterwards. If you've been able to perform this a few times at your imaginary edge, now you can take it to a small curve. So anything that is about this high and you can start practicing there. If you've done it a few times and you're really confident with it, then you can go higher step by step. Take it slow. Now it's time for skill number two, which is the back wheel hop drop. This one is, as I promised you, an advanced one. So make sure you have the wheelie drop really dialed before you progress to this one. With the back wheel hop drop, the motion is very similar, but it is a little bit more complex. You usually need one gear harder for this. You also come to a full stop with a track stand at the edge. However, what you then do is you do a longer ratchet and when you're at the top, you pull the rear brake because you don't want your rear to loop out and yourself to fall on your back or the edge. So what you want to do is track stand, pedal ratchet, pull the brake and then let go of the rear brake, do a small ratchet and hop off the edge. That's why it's called the back wheel hop drop because you're hopping off the edge. Obviously, because this standing here and then hopping off the edge requires quite a lot of timing and precision. You want to start, is start to practice this, just like the other skill, in a flat and controlled environment. Here is the steps leading to that. The movement is very similar. You also perform a ratchet and take up your bike into yourself and you're standing up. However, you want to have one harder gear and you want to have your front wheel higher, so almost at the sweet spot. Once you're there, you want to pull the rear brake because actually then you can stand there. The moment you ratchet a little bit forward to perform the hop to get down, you want to, of course, let go of the brake because if you're not letting go, you can perform a ratchet. This is how to practice it in a flat ground to get used to the motion. For me, it helps to take this to an actual line on the ground because this way you can practice to really pop your front wheel up, stay with your rear wheel at the edge, that's going to be your edge, and from there, perform the ratchet to get your real wheel over the edge. And that's what you will, will need when you're doing the back wheel hop drop, is you really need that preci precise timing to know which gear do I need to create that way and of course where do I need to start my motion to get there and then how big does my ratchet have to be to get my rear wheel from here to here. This move needs a lot of practice, so take your time, progress it step by step, and as I'm saying, don't take it to obstacles straight away. You can take it to small curbs, nothing can happen there, but before you take it to two pallets or more, have it dialed 10 out of 10 times. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Roxy's Ride and Inspire, and if you like my videos, if you would like me to continue, please buy me a coffee. I love coffee. The link is in the description and hope to see you for my next video. Feel free to share, feel free to comment and click subscribe. Goodbye.